Remain where you are. The timeline of events of this person traveling from Ontong Java back to Honiara. There's potentially cases that have actually come down to Morovo on ships that have come west since then. We're thinking about every possibility and we're gonna have to send home our staff. We've just offered for Mary and her family to come and be with us isolated on the island, but I don't know that that's what they're gonna wanna do. And we're scrambling, we don't, we don't have a lot of diesel to keep the generator running. We've got quite a lot of food, we've got quite a lot of stuff in the freezer, but it's pretty stressful. So it's just been a mad rush this morning with the news, trying to figure out what's actually happening, notify communities, try and let everyone know of the risks. Um, yeah, and decide what some of our staff members are doing, who's going home, who's staying. We're essentially entering a lockdown period that'll probably last at least a month, at the very least. Um, yeah, it's just the weirdest feeling, it really is. When you're this isolated and you just remove that tiny little bit of connection you have with the outside world, it's a very, very horrible feeling. It's not nice. to get out. Oh. Are you comfortable there, Philly? Yep. <laughs> Mary's heading home to get her family set up to isolate as best they can in the village. And as a result, the kids have been running around finding all the extra toys they can send home because they know the kids are going to be in uh, ISO for a little while, like we are. So there's Bonus Christmas presents going back to the village, which is really cute. Another dinosaur! Oh, that's nice. And what else? I think one of my trucks. One of your trucks. That was really kind, wasn't it? Hey, just keeps on giving. We've just got back. We were having dinner up top because, I don't know, we just need to feed the kids. And Katie's desk is just covered. All the hard drives are wet. Her laptop's wet. Testing a sword and there's really, really close thunder lining. Ready for it? Big thunder. What's the story? <laughs> Just keeps on giving. Uh, we have a dead gecko in our water tank. So, although we have like highly filtered UV sterilized water. We've got lots of water in the rest of the resort, so it's going to drain so the tank. So I could smell it, I was right. Yeah, Katie could smell something this morning in the water, so... Yes. How, how much water's in the tank? I don't know, 8,000, 9,000 litres. <laughs> but we don't have anyone else in the resort, so we've got like another... I don't know, 150,000 litres, so yeah, water's right. not an issue. So we have to drain it and then refill it. Good times! <laughs> oh. <laughs> Look at this! <laughs> wow! Are you guys anticipating not being able to get coconuts for a little while, Ken? <laughs> no, I, I think some of them might be Gemmel's coconuts as well. <laughs> After two years on the sidelines of this pandemic, we are so aware of the sad but probable outcomes of a coronavirus outbreak in a place like this, with little to no health Goodbye. infrastructure. Many members of our community have comorbidities that put them at higher risk of suffering serious adverse effects of COVID. And from a customary point of view, isolation from sick loved ones would be highly unlikely. It was really tough to say goodbye to the people we love. Miri is a part of our family, and while we hoped we could do more to support her, she needed to be with her family in the village. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Are you gonna say goodbye to Miri? She's going. Bye, bye. Bye, bye, Miri. Stay safe. Don't eat too many coconuts. I'm 
Would you say, Philly? Big family cuddle? Mm -mm. <laughs> I think everyone's sad, aren't we? <laughs> Alright, so we have just said goodbye to Miriam for we don't know how long now actually because she's got to go back and be with her family in the community and we don't know what we're doing, when we're going to be in Oz or travelling, so it's a pretty sad morning. But we are off to the beach for some saltwater fun. therapy and some fun what that's a very nice dance you're doing i love it you look like a little snowflake eel i think this is the beginning of our official island covid lockdown <laughs> It's safe to say that all of you at home have faced a lockdown and it's pretty tough when you have kids to care for. We are incredibly lucky that this is our backyard. But already a few days into this, the fear and worry of what could be is something really difficult to handle. Remaining optimistic and upbeat for the kids is hard work right now, but I know that we will get through it. So it's been another crazy morning. Um, I have been down the beach with the kids, which was really nice, but after that I've just been scrambling to sort out a few last minute details before we are fully locked down. We have the added complication of having a couple, but one in particular. Um, we have one staff member who has a lot of conditions that would be um, make it very bad if he caught COVID. He's already been in the community. We've just been strategizing about how we can isolate him in a separate section of the island um, to get him and his family out of the community. Yeah, just small stresses. Trying to figure out the logistics of how we're gonna do this because now we will have, you know, with the two families that we'll have at the end of the island, we're gonna end up with about 15 people here. So we have to feed 15 people every day. So there's definitely gonna be a very heavy reliance on fishing and spear fishing we're gonna to have to get out there a lot more often and produce a lot more fish because we don't have the stores to stay locked down to stay locked down for that long otherwise so it's a pretty um yeah it's a pretty confronting time this is definitely the most stressed i think i've been in this whole period just trying to work out all the different aspects that going into that go into actually locking down for an extended period of time. I feel like I'm in a bit of a daze. Really, is how I feel. We're in a very lucky position, obviously where we are. We're very safe. We don't have people coming through, moving in and out of our community, but just working out how we actually keep everyone fed and happy and healthy and safe along the way is, is tricky. And now knowing that if um, something were to happen there's just not that support system there at all even less so than there was before so yeah um, I'm sure it'll normalize and I'm sure 
some people watching will be like, oh, there's nothing we've been through all this. The difference is here, um, extraordinarily isolated. So we essentially now have to handle anything that happens on the island ourselves. Um, there's no running for help at all. So, yeah. I guess the other really big confronting thing is saying goodbye to people this morning and knowing that communities as well are in the same position where there's just no external help <clears throat> and just hoping that everyone does their best to let this pass through and supports each other and um, yeah you just the, the unknown is so massive like it must be very frightening going back to the village right now knowing that there's zero support available to you if you were to to get COVID we don't even know what strain it is what variant um, yeah Seriously, I just smashed a glass and don't, don't they say things like this come in threes? I mean, it's been more than three now, that's enough. Uh, last night I brought a huge big bunch of beautiful ripe bananas down to the house and then a possum came down and peed all over them, ate one and then obviously decided it was his property, I don't know. Just, and then like the gecko dying in the water and my computer getting rained on and I just feel like there's enough going on world, that's enough. Oh, so we're feeding about 18 mouths at the moment which is a pretty confronting number to be feeding every day. So Katie and I are going to get out there, it's pretty rough today, it's not ideal but as long as it's safe we'll get out there and just try and get something so that everyone's got a bit of protein.
you shot a big Spanish thing. <laughs> Mommy got this one. Mommy shot it. Join us in the next episode as we share how we fillet and store a fish like this beautiful Spanish mackerel. And we settle into a strict lockdown as coronavirus spreads to nearby villages. Hit that red button to support us and we'll see you next week for some more Island Life stories. Right now. <coughs> That's a good sound. One, two, three. <laughs>